like insurance companies, we know we're all involved with them one sh in one way, shape, or form. They are now offering discounts for people who wear fitness trackers and send the insurance company their data. Critics are saying this could be a bad idea. One insurance company in particular announced that all of its life insurance policies would become interactive in 2019, where they're tracking fitness and health data through wearable devices and also smartphones. And when you look at these types of programs, it's easy to see how there are pros and cons and some of them reward customers for their fitness. Others, you know, it's a matter of they're watching your fitness and maybe you can reduce your premiums. And so at first blush, a lot of pros. Okay, you're wearing a fitness tracker, you're more cognizant of it, you may save some money on your insurance. And I like that part of it. Listen. They have no regulation to prevent them from also punishing you if your readings are poor. And so that's my big concern, is right now we have the ACA, which right now protects people from discrimination on pre-existing conditions. If that were to get repealed, and your insurance company has this data about you and knows you don't take that many steps, and maybe you don't have the most active lifestyle, there's really nothing to prevent them from discriminating against you and penalizing you. So that's one. Two is that you're taking something that already is unequal, right? A fitness tracker, unless they give it to you for free, costs money. So now the people who can afford a fitness tracker will get discounts. The people who can't afford a fitness tracker, who may not get it from the company, don't qualify for the discounts. So the people who need it the most are gonna be discriminated against on costs. I am concerned about sharing too much information, but at the same time, I'm interested in saving lives. If you have a life insurance policy and you're able to prove that you've improved your fitness, you've quit smoking, and you're willing to share that data with your insurance company and your premium goes down hundreds of dollars, I think that is awesome. So much of health does come down to personal initiative. And your initiative could be for a lot of different reasons. It could be to save money, to, be, to look better at the beach. Who knows? But financial incentives, they do often work. And they, so- They do sometimes. I, I just, with this particular widespread program that all of these policies are tied to this fitness tracker incentivization. One, to your point about privacy, we all overshare. We do. But now you have a device that's broadcasting all of your information, all of your everything information. from your blood yes. pressure to how many steps you take a day, how active you are. I just really worry about that being used for the wrong purposes or and the wrong hands. Or it would be easy this, to, this isn't protected. to cheat too. Yeah, and I mean, it's I can not easily protected put the fitness HIPAA. tracker on my dog. Yeah. And oh my gosh, Travis ran seven miles today. Well, I had a patient actually, and this is a funny story that she her she was a teenager and her parents were trying to incentivize her to lose weight, so she would take her fitness tracker that her parents put on her, and this was actually interestingly written up in a book I read recently too called Untangled, and she put it in the socks on low heat and put it in the dryer. And so the fitness tracker was going around giving her all these steps and it was fake. And so I, I just, I worry about this. And then lastly, just as a dermatologist, these devices work on green light. It's not nearly as accurate in people of color and who are pigmented as it is in people who aren't pigmented. So again, you're getting into a situation where you may have inaccurate reads for whatever reason, whether someone's faking it or the light just isn't sensing their activity properly. And then you're penalizing them in a way that actually impacts them financially. So that's, well, this that's what, what's interesting is when you start talking about insurance, it harkens back to my days before I went into medicine. That's I right. was an actuarial you... scientist, and what I did, quite frankly, I was a math major in college, and I would look at life abstractly. It, it wasn't a person. It's why I went into medicine. I wanted to interact one-on-one, -on -one, have an impact on the individual level, but as an actuarial scientist, you look at population data, and you look at the likelihood that, quite frankly, this person might die by a certain age and what is that going to cost and what premiums do you have to charge? So this is quite simply actuarial science in a way. Okay, we know that if you decrease your blood pressure, if you move more and you don't have type two diabetes, the data I mean, that you plug real in, it, it's real data and then you know that that person, you can charge them a lower premium because they're likely to live longer and so, there are nuts and bolts to the mathematic part, mathematical part of this that I am very much, um, I understand. And so my whole hope in all this would just be this. Let, let's, and I mean this sincerely, we should not punish people who are dealing with health issues.